Hey everybody, today's video is going to be a painting of little chickadees with a very contemporary twist because I did a little funky uh, treatment of the background in this piece. So I hope you like that. So if you came today because you wanted to see a painting tutorial or perhaps a product review or just some fun little projects, anything painting, you came to the right place. I'm Suzanne and I'm glad you're here. If you are my subscribers, thank you so, so very much. And if you're not, please consider subscribing. I'd appreciate that very much. And know that today's video will also be available on my Patreon page in the, in the full length, long, unedited version. And when I say unedited, that's a scary, scary thought because what you see on YouTube, you hear voiceovers, okay? <laughs> on Patreon, you're very likely to hear me singing, having internal dialogues, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's it's not always necessarily enjoyable because you know nobody wants to really hear me sing, but sometimes that happens. Some sometimes, almost all the time. Um, but yeah, this this particular video will be available on Patreon. So if you'd like to see it, go check it out. And uh, yeah, um, we're gonna go ahead and get started on the chickadees. And if you have any questions about this video please leave it in the comment section and I'll see you on the other side. Sometimes when I start out a piece, it may just mean how am I going to prep my canvas prior to my actual painting. And in this case, I'm doing a little bit of an acrylic um, background, just a plain gray acrylic background. And, I'm, and this will dry out quickly. So after it's dry, I'm gonna go ahead and take these stencils that you can pick up at any craft store or you can get them online and take some just metallic spray paint and just spray on this kind of funky, I don't know, somewhat contemporary background. It just makes things fun, really. And that's what I did here. And then I just did a loose pencil sketch and then I'm ready to do the birds. The paints that we're starting with on our lineup for this little painting of chickadees, we've got, uh, this is Michael Harding's Ivory Black, Windsor Newton's, uh, ultramarine blue, also Windsor Newton's, Payne's gray, Michael Harding's uh, King's blue, Windsor Newton's titanium white. I have Windsor Newton's, um, okay, we have uh, burnt umber and Van Dyke brown. Then I also have Windsor Newton's uh, yellow ochre. And these are all the 12 shades of grays, violet gray, mid gray, light or pale gray, yellow gray and green gray. And so I think that's what we're starting here <laughs> with our little painting of uh, chickadees. And of course, you know me, I will probably be adding some paint along the way. Here are some of the brush lineup we're starting with. And I have a Rosemary number one long filbert, that's this guy. And then right next to it, I have a zero eclipse pointed round. Then I have um, just a number two ivory long filbert. That's this guy right here. This is a rosemary one quarter ivory dagger. Those are great for wings and the feathers in the wings. Um, this is actually a complimentary brush that Rosemary sent me and I believe it is a Shiraz, one of their Shiraz pointed rounds. I don't really know what size it is. This is a, um, a zero eclipse domed filbert. So that is our brush lineup too. So uh, hopefully I don't usually mention it up front, but I thought, why not? That's probably what I'm starting with. And hopefully that'll help you in your brush selection if you're following along. All right, you see I have a loose sketch and I'm actually working with a brush that was a complimentary brush from Rosemary and Company, and it doesn't actually say what it is, but I think it is a number four pointed um, round, I think of the Shiraz line of Rosemary brushes. So here I'm just blocking in the basic colors of the chickadee. And you will see that the sketch that I have on here is truly just a rough sketch. So I'll be pulling out some of the areas like the body and making it a little bit fuller and et cetera, et cetera. But it does give me a basic uh, guideline as to where to lay the paint down. And I do have to kind of remain clean because I am painting on a background that the acrylic background with the pattern on it that I, you know, I don't, I can't cover it back over with oil paints if I make a mistake. So you'll see, sometimes I might actually take 
the brush with a little bit of paint thinner and remove paint if I need to, but I can't cover it over. And that sound you hear in the background is my dog dropping his tennis ball here with me because he wants me to play. He just says, Mom, don't do voiceovers, let's play ball. So far I've managed to do this much of the blocking in with the same um, pointed round brush. Um, I always like to uh, challenge myself to see how much I can actually get out of a brush and I have to say it's a pretty good one. But I'm switching now over to my quarter inch sword brush. It's a ivory sword from Rosemary and that's going to allow me to get the little straight lines in the wings and, uh, and then some. Now, I've got to start laying in the stick that this bird is in, you know, I, you know because I know eventually I will be uh, um, putting feathers over the edges, and so I've got to figure out where everything's going. And I'm keeping the colors rather cool in the stick. I'm, believe it or not, you saw the palette from the beginning. I'm using a pretty limited palette in that I'm sticking to pretty cool colors here. And so there's a lot of purples. Um, I'm using a lot of dioxazine purple and Van Dyke brown and white and I am using a right now the brush I'm using is an Eclipse Long Filbert by Rosemary I believe it's a probably a number three or four and you know I have another bird here that I've got to paint and oftentimes I just got to get everything blocked in before I can actually do detail so that's what I'm fixing to do but I will promise I will get that on and all the light highlights and all the fun stuff that will go into this little bird. But I want to get this guy blocked in too. So that's where we're going next.
because I'm using two separate photo references of chickadees, They're, these birds are not actually sitting on the same branch someplace. This is, you know, the composition's basically from my head, and I am using some photo references. As you can see there towards the uh, left, you can see a photo reference of the bird I'm currently working on. I do have to choose where my light's coming from. So, oftentimes the uh, reference might have a different light, you know, the light might be falling on it differently. So I will be using the first bird I did, the one on the top, as to how to direct m where my light is going and the temperature and heat of everything. So yeah, I will have to change my lighting on this bird just a little bit. So you'll see, I'll do it all at once, but basically I'm just getting everything laid in. And, uh, you know, it looks like I'm actually stacking up the feathers just a little bit. But, um, yeah, you'll see what I'm talking about. I'm uh, probably showing you a, the brush that I'm using, but I don't see. It's, it's still the same. Um, um, that is a long filbert that I'm using right now. And, uh, and my dog is still trying to force me to play ball with him. So that's that <laughs> the bouncing sound you hear in the background. But uh, yeah, so I'm just putting in the light too of where the stick is. So I am pretty much, woo, I'm out of control. I am pretty much making it like the light is coming in from the top right of the, the screen here. So here you can see I'm putting in some highlights on the top of the bird and wherever I think the highlights would fall based on where my light source is. So if I'm using this bird to dictate where everything's going uh, as far as the light, uh, that's I'll have to follow suit on the other bird. The brush I'm using now is a number one pointed round eclipse by Rosemary, and that's allowing me to get into the tiny little details and things I need to do. So that's what we're that's what's happening here. So I'm blending, I'm blending my bird's body into the light that I added on that highlight on the on the back end of that bird.
Just a reminder, this uh, particular video is available now on my Patreon channel, so please, if you're wanting to see the full length, uncut, long version of this particular video, please check out my Patreon page. Now, I, as, I, as I mentioned earlier, the sketches, the, the graphite sketches that I do on the canvas are just rough sketches. So I've already lengthened the tail, I already widened the body. So you can tell this is, you know, a very, very rough sketch that went down. And I'm trying to just lay in the details of each little feather in the tail, you know, each tail feather, and I'll get each little wing feather. It's a process, and I do do a lot of paint stacking, and that's what you see here. So I'm kind of fuzzing out the edges and making it, you know, just playing with the light, where the everything where the light will fall on this little bird. When I first laid down the little white cheek patches of the chickadee, you can see I used kind of a light purple. And that allows me to put the lighter, uh, warmer value on top of it, and it creates the depth that you need, you know, so you could feel those little fat white cheeks on those little chickadees. They're so cute. But that's what I'm doing here. So, you know, you've got to give it something to jump off of. And I'm starting to really lay in the details now. I've got to put in where the eye's going to go. That's what I'm doing here. And, uh, you know, don't forget, these birds have to have feet. They currently don't have any feet. They're just these little round, feetless birds sitting on a rock. So I'll be getting those in here in just a bit. But laying in the details, so we're into the fun part. And as I mentioned before, I have to make the, uh, the bird on top dictate where the highlights and the light will go. So here I am putting in the light on the front of this bird because the, our light source is coming from the top right hand corner. So I've got to uh, follow suit. And just like the other bird, I'm doing the same type of details. I've got to lay in the eyes and stack the um, little white cheek pouch and even highlights on the top of the head. All of that has to go in. And this is just all part of the detail. Now, there we go, we gotta put that little eye in and we can't forget those feet. That's just gonna drive me nuts until we get those little feet in. But, um, you know, we're into the fun, detail -y stage. Remember, when laying down colors, before you even can do the detail, you've got to have your uh, base colors down. So I usually start with a little bit of a cooler, darker color as, a, as far as darker value than whatever the top detail paint will be. So in the cheek pouch, uh, cheek pouch, the cheek patch, it's going to be kind of a lightish purpley gray and then I slowly stack up the white.
you know me, if I have to uh, use my hand in a certain direction, it's just easier to flip the painting. So yeah, again, I'm just adding the lighter values into the uh, cheek patch and uh, it's just easier for my hand to move in this direction. So I just flip my painting over a little bit, just makes it, it's just for ease of paint. And I'll flip it back over and we're gonna get some more of the highlights on the front of the bird. And we'll see, I've got a little bit of a light purple on the top of his head. Again, remembering where my light source is because it's not evident in my reference that I'm using because it's, it's uh, that reference does not have the same lighting that I let the first bird dictate. So you gotta be conscious of that. And uh, yeah, we're just getting it down to the wire and just putting in all the fun details. And that's what you're gonna see here for a bit. Okay, it's about time these birds get some feet. So I am uh, kind of using a middle tone gray. It's kind of a purpley gray to do the first foot here. And then I've got to go ahead and do the dark values in the foot. And again, keeping in mind where the light source is, um, I've got to put the shadows in accordingly. So I'm putting the little feet in, their little nails, and then I've got to go back in and do the highlights on, t you know, on that side of the bird. So I'm using a tiny brush. And what I'm showing you is if I'm doing little work, like these little tiny highlights on the feet, I'm going to take the smallest brush I have. In this case, it's probably an, a zero, a, a zero pointed round. And I will load a glob of paint just on the very tip of that brush. And that's what I was showing you there. And I will let that little glob do the work. I won't really even be pressing putting or putting much pressure on the brush at all because I just need to drop that little bit of gold, little bit of white paint to create those little white highlights on the feet. So of course this bird's getting his little bit highlights on him. We're just finishing up doing some of the little fine details in his back and he too will have to have some feet in just a few minutes. So but this is 
folks, this is what makes it real for me, you know, doing all the fun details. And then I start to feel like this bird's got some volume, some weight to him. He's got that nice dark shadow under his underbelly, and he's got the fun highlights on him. Again, stacking more um, of the paint, you know, doing more lighter values on top of the cheek patch. And again, see the little glob of paint? I let that little glob and I um, do the work. And if you can see, I've got that white paint a little bit more impasto, and that even makes it have a little bit more depth. It feels like it's got more substance. And you can see the highlights, I'm warmed up the highlights, and I'm using a combination of cadmium yellow, uh, light, and white to do that highlight um, on the back of the bird. I wanted it to be kind of warm. So that's what we're doing here, I'm fixing that little eye, and you know, just getting everything in. But yeah, this bird needs feet too, right? And alas, this bird is getting his feet and uh, getting everything in there. And again, I'll have to go back in with the highlights and behind his leg. But um, yeah, he's getting his feet and I will be working on a lot of the highlights just on the stick alone. So you've got to really put that in correctly. You know, you've got to figure out where the highlights go, where the, you know, the darker values go and make and pull it all together and that's what we're getting here to, you know getting ready to do here and again i've got my little quarter inch dagger out perfect for making little sharp straight lines whether you're doing little lines of wing feathers or little lines of whiskers on a cat or little lines of hair it's those are amazing brushes to work with uh one of my um uh, youtube subscribers had asked me about, I think it was on the cat video, what was that brush? Everybody wants to know what that brush is. And again, it is the quarter inch ivory dagger by Rosemary and Company. And I love, love, love those brushes. And okay, so, you know, I'm just doing the little buds that's on this branch because I'm not doing leaves. So the time of the year that this would be would be probably late winter, early spring perhaps. And Believe it or not, it would be probably like this time of the year. And these chickadees um, are having their, they're starting to pair up and, and have their songs. So if you're listening uh, to the music and the background sounds, I did include the sounds of chickadees, if you haven't figured that out, in the background here. So you get to hear that, what they sound like even this time of the year, they start doing their mating calls. And I'm pretty much wrapping it up. I'm just doing the details here and doing the highlights again remembering where my light source is and again I'm showing you how I'm using just the glob of paint to do the detail and uh, so we're you know knowing where the lights coming from and popping it in accordingly
So if that light's coming down right on these inside edges here, let's see if I can focus on that, not on my hand, I would have some of that light just catch on here, right here, like that. So I would probably have a little bit of white too. So I might would have something that looks like that. So I've got to get back in here and put a lot of the other little light highlights in. So that's what I'm going to do. I really am and I'm going to put a couple more little like light places here because I'm just imagining I am the light and I'm hitting the top of these the stick feeling good okay one of the things I'll have to do is you can't see it but I know it's there there is some um, eraser marks <laughs> remember i told you that there that when i started this i was going to put a cat on this i probably even at one point had it on but then decided not to use it for that erased it yada yada and now i need to take it off so i will be doing some stuff now i am going to just kind of fuzz up a little bit of this area here because it's now that i have the stick in i'm putting some of the little light feather strokes if i can get them in Do the same on this guy. There's the blue jay sound. <laughs> Not the chickadee, but that's the blue jay. Funny thing is, my uh, students that are my art, my art students that I usually have from 10 to 12 know. When they hear the Blue Jay, time to start packing it up. Okay. That little fluffy bird. a little bit more down on this guy. I'll already even bring a little bit of his body over the top of his leg here. 
just like that. Okay, guys, I'm calling it done. I'm calling this little piece done. I hope you enjoyed watching that. And remember, this will be available on Patreon. And I'm bringing it down so you can, let me turn this light off. Sometimes the glare just offers a little too much. So let's talk about it. So you can see some of the detail now that I put into the stick um, in the bird itself, if I can keep the glare off of it. Um, I'm actually pretty happy with this. And there we have it. Well, it's done. And here is the completed piece. And I'm hoping that there's not too much of a weird glare from my light here because we do have metallic paint. You can see this is it's slightly metallic and it does shine kind of odd. But um, yeah, this was a fun little piece. And I'll try to get a little closer so you can see just kind of the little fun uh, touches on the uh, on the little birds. And uh, you know, this was, this was delightful. This was a fun piece for me to do and I hope you enjoyed watching the process. And if you have any questions at all about anything you saw me cover in today's video, please leave it in the comments section. If you have maybe something you'd like to see, um, maybe a product review or something, you know, just leave it in the comment section, you know, let me know. And if you enjoyed today's video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already a subscriber, cause that, that would be awesome if you did. And ring the bell so you'll know when the next video comes out. And know too that this particular one will be available on my Patreon channel. So check that out as well. So from very, very cold, Kingsport, Tennessee. It's 27 degrees, y'all. That's cold. That's cold to me anyway. From Kingsport, Tennessee, I'll see ya. Bye.